knowledge. I'm the classification guru, fixer of dirty data. There is so much dirty data. There's duplicates, there's missing information, there's the wrong information. It goes on and on. And when a book. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. One fun fact. Uh, Susan is the is the leading rapper on LinkedIn. Hi folks, welcome to one more super episode of the Supply Chain Show. Today I'm going to talk about dirty data. In Supply Chain we always say garbage in and garbage out, right? And how to fix this garbage cell say. But the question is where we are right now. We are actually in New York in one of those Irish hotels because we met in this super conference of Optimal. We had great fun. Yeah, oh, it was brilliant. It was so brilliant, good, right? yeah. Right. So okay. many amazing people there. <laughs> Susan is known as uh, the data classification guru. I won't be able to basically introduce herself because it's like, it's grand. So introduce yourself, please. Yeah, hi everyone. So I am Susan Walsh. I'm the classification guru, fixer of dirty data. Uh, my specialism is procurement spend data. So I classify data and show companies what they're spending their money on so that they can start to make cost savings and have better negotiations with their suppliers. Um, but in addition to that, I also do things like clean CRM systems, databases, where there is so much dirty data, there's duplicates, there's missing information, there's the wrong information, it goes on and on. But basically my team and I, we love to do the jobs that everyone else hates. Yeah, but how do you get into it? I'm very interested to know. I mean, as you said, everybody hates doing it. And then yeah. because I remember implementing ERP three times and this is a task nobody wants to do actually. Yeah. How are you going to do it? I, I found data by accident. So my first business was a clothes shop. I had that in Guildford in the UK. Yeah. Um, I, I worked before that in FMCG and sales account management for a number of years. Um, realized that that wasn't what I wanted to do. So opened this amazing shop. Beautiful clothes, um, which was 10 years ago, and nobody came in to buy anything. So it didn't last very long. Okay. Um, I was I had racked up so much debt that I had to go bankrupt, but I couldn't afford to go bankrupt. I had to save up to go bankrupt because it cost £600 in the UK. Wow. Yeah. So I needed a job, and I needed a job quickly. And so I found this ad online, and it was just some spend data classification i'd never done it before but i thought well i've worked for a lot of large companies like i think i know what they're spending their money on uh, and that's where it started and i spent five years with them i built a team from nothing up to 14 uh trained them all recruited them wow. all managed all the projects and um, developed my own methodology while i was there to classify and clean data um using a software called omniscope which is off the shelf but I've kind of created this unique methodology to, to clean things, which makes it faster and more accurate. That's your IP, really, right? You're not going to, yeah, see, you're not yeah, going to share with no. us, right? However, <laughs> um, if I go down here, I have kind of reverse engineered it. All right. And read a book. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. It's called Between the Spreadsheets, Classifying and Fixing Dirty Data. That's my copy. Uh, so you gotta yeah. get <laughs> <laughs> and um, and this, this is literally... Um, how to classify data, how to clean data, how to normalize suppliers, why you need to do it. Um, all that is in here in Excel because everybody uses I'm Excel. I'm with her since last almost three days. We met like twice. She never mentioned she had a book. I'm impressed. Oh, Round of applause, everybody. Round of applause. Thank you, thank you. Round of applause. Right. Yeah, so it, it's only been out about eight, nine months. It came yeah. out last September. So yeah, yeah, still nice. spreading the Nice. Nice. So yeah. is it on Amazon? It's on Amazon, um, but on. if you're in the US, you'd be better going to the American Library Association. Yeah. They're, they're no, the no, no, I want people to buy. So give me the link. We're going to put it in the video, right? Yeah. In the bottom in the description. And please get yeah. the book. Uh, yep. Barnes, it's on Barnes & Noble as well. As well. Yeah. Super cool. Super cool. Uh, yeah. Very Super cool. cool. Yeah. Now, so let's move to the, as I said, implemented ERP, spend data is, is crap. Uh, especially the ERP master data is bad. Yeah. So what in your experience, what are the top three problems, the most common problems you, do you see? Dirty data, dirty data, dirty data. Okay. I'm just, I'm just kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's all people related problems. Yeah. Um, so it's input errors, um, typos, missing information, Incorrect information. Okay. It's, it's all those kinds of things that cause the problems. Right. So, so where do you start actually? Let's say, where do you start? Well, the first thing that you need to do is clean your data and fix it. Get it to a place where it's usable and trustworthy. Yeah. 
but I think the real secret sauce is maintenance. You know, you have to maintain it and you have to check it regularly and make sure that it's still what it's supposed to be. Okay, so let's assume I've got, I'm implementing a new uh, ERP system or yeah. a spend. I'm going to start looking into my spend, right? As you said, there is a one product which have a three different, four different SKUs, for example, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. There is a 12 suppliers mm -hmm. for the same part number you're buying because yeah. your two strategic suppliers was not working and you're doing your spot buying, for yeah. example, right? And for example, you have created, a, you know, the different part numbers, for, as I said, for the same product, yeah. but also you have a same part number for three different products. I've seen, yeah, I've seen that happening that, as well. Yeah. The thing is, if I hire you, that requires a specific business know-how, the people who has done it or who have actually created that dirt in the first place. But how do you as an outsider come in and gather that inside information of the business? So so we can flag, first of all, all those, those issues really quickly. Right. Um, and then double check with the client. But actually, when we've worked with the data for, say, just even a day, we actually yeah. start to know. So we'll find patterns in the data. So you're talking about codes that are yeah. um, used for diff the same code for different products. Yeah. Well, actually, sometimes like, Codes for this part start with one, two, three, and codes for this part start with four, five, six. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's little clues in the data to tell you when it's wrong. Right. Other times you, you check with the client, um, but it's it's making it accessible and easy to tackle because a lot of people just don't do anything with it because they feel like it's such an overwhelming yeah. thing to do. That's cool. So that's fine. And so we got you in the in the in the game. So yeah. I've, I've got you the project, and then how you manage it. So how long it takes, and yeah, um, I mean projects can last two weeks to two months. It really depends yeah. on the volume of data, cool. and I work with anything from. So it's not it's not like forever thing, right? No, gonna, no, 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 no. This is like I mean, two three months is the maximum. Really? Yeah, so, so you yeah. come in, you're gonna sort of. The crap out, yeah, I don't, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. sort the shit out, right? yeah, and then and then yeah. you so it's not like yeah, oh, and, and cool. sometimes I'll do training for teams as to, well, to, yeah, so that they can maintain those standards and consistencies. And one of the things that I do say is you have to make sure your data has its coat on, so ah, like your jacket, like, well, yeah, like right, yeah. So, right. so it has to be consistent. So think about um, like this. What do we call it? like? I've just had some chips for for lunch, but yeah. you might call them fries. So you have to have consistent terminology and um, things like units of measure, you know, UK, US use different terms versus the rest of the world. Um, then it needs to be organized. So, you know, imagine you this nice jacket of yours, you get home and you throw it in your wardrobe and then you go back to get it next week and it's yeah. all creased and yeah. you can't find it. This is exactly the same. Like if you had to type, put, hung that on a, a hanger, put it with all your other coats, then you'd be able to go out and pull it out straight away. Data is the same if you categorize it correctly, whether yeah. it's uh, by category, by country, by right. region, by person, you could go and pull that information as you need it, Yeah. rather than spending hours trying to build a report. So, so that moves to, I think, the, the, the one third part of our last third of, the, of our conversation here. But what are the top three tips you're going to give for people to actually uh, improve the data better? Right, so there's yeah. a less dirt for you to sort, right? Yeah. So one is classification, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Second and third. What is it? Third? Okay, so I'm just going to finish quote. Cool. Just okay. Yeah, you do don't want to keep them hanging. No, 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 no. So A is for accuracy. Right. And then once you have consistency, organized, and yeah. accurate data, you then have trustworthy data, which means so, you can use it. So let me repeat. So first, classification. Second is accuracy. Consistency, organization, accuracy, and trust. Okay, great. Yeah. So let's talk about the trust. And then the top three tips would be, first of all, agree your standards and yeah. your terms and your processes before you start something. Make sure everybody is aware of them and on board. Yeah. Always think about your end result and what you want to achieve. No, don't just think about the problem you need to fix right now. Think about what your end goal is. And then maintenance, super, super so important. Maintenance. Like I can't tell you, there's no point in paying me or anyone else to fix your data if you're, gonna maintain if you're, it. If you're not going to maintain it because you'll end up in the same situation again. Right. I want to go back to code again. Yeah. That's important. Is this your, your invention? This is mine, yeah. Your invention. Right. So start again. What is C? Consistency. Consistency. Organization. Organization. Accuracy. Accuracy. And trustworthy data. And trustworthy data. Yeah. Right. So we can have, that will become in the thumbnail. That will turn into a blog as well. We're going to link you back. Brilliant. Right. Okay. So th this is great. You know, yeah. this philosophy, I love that. Is love. And your book is basically preaching the same thing. I yeah. Guess. Yeah. And also, I think for me, I came from a business background and then yeah. fell into the data world. And what I'm trying to do is bridge the gap. Right. So, you know, 
as you know, there's a lot of people in the data world who love what I'm talking about, but I'm also trying to speak to the people who work with data who are not necessarily data professionals or right. procurement or procurement people who have to work with data but are not data professionals. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to make it fun, interesting, relatable and mm-hmm. easy to achieve so that we can improve our data because the reality is it's actually getting worse, not better. Yes. You would think with all this technology out there that it would get better. But, but the problem is nobody's cleaning the data before they start using the technology. And Very good point. and then it just, Very good point. you know, AI learns from training data sets. Yes. If your data sets are wrong, it's going to learn the wrong thing. And this was my second last question, actually. The, given what's happening with technology, we're talking about big data, AI, machine learning, deep learning. All of that actually depends on what data you have. Yeah. Because the mach- any algorithm, any AI-based algorithm, even your simple Python algorithm yeah. can't do anything unless you go through the, the good set of data to improve and give yeah. some predictive or prescriptive suggestions to prove yeah. it. So, and I think you touched, so how you see this whole, everybody's almost obsessed. I mean, we spent the whole conference talking about predictive procurement, predictive supply chain, yeah. predictive sourcing. It all depends on the data you put into any kind of software to, to get the, let's call it, expected out, outcome, yeah. right? So, how you see that challenge going forward, you know? Yeah, and one of the things that we, unfortunately, we, we had our sessions at the same time, yes. so we didn't get to see each other's, but right. something I said in mine was that there is no magic button, there is no quick fix, there is no software in the world that is going to magically clean your data. I think we have to be realistic about what software can achieve, and we have to explain that to the decision makers who are buying the software. Yeah because it won't fix everything. There will always be a, a an element of, of human intervention, checking, etc. And, and one of the other things is that for these people who are doing AI, ML, I'm using software, it's really important for them to understand the data they're working with. Mm-hmm. So they might do an output, but they might not understand what's good or bad. Um, and one of the things that really helps with that is data maintenance again because if you're checking your data regularly you know what it looks like you know how it should look and then it starts to become easier to pick up anything that doesn't look quite right so absolutely absolutely now very important question one fun fact uh susan is the is the leading rapper on linkedin so if you must go and follow her it's mostly mostly lip sync right it it, it is super super cool Given the fact LinkedIn is the most boring place, I mean, of course, I talk about leadership business, but that's, you know, you can't share your, you know, and now people are sharing their dogs and stuff, but that's fine. I'm, I don't have a dog, but yeah. the point is, no, it, Susan don't. is one of those people, which I, it's, you know, because I always believe you got to be yourself, right? In business, you know, how yeah. you are. And you are one of those people who actually yourself on LinkedIn. Of yeah, course, 100%. you talk business and you give people what, you know, advice, you give them yeah. advice, suggestions, you contribute to the community, which is awesome. But what do you do? in this whole wrapping with this whole bling on you know what it's br- ask me is brave right it is how very- you get into it and i think you're getting a good support out of the community yeah, people um, don't, do you people say that oh it's not facebook it's not do you say that people i never think? get that in fact the opposite yeah. i i get people and i, I at this yeah. event i've met people who've said i follow you yeah. on linkedin i love your lip syncs yeah now you would not expect that you know i you know because it could have damaged my reputation my credibility um, it started in lockdown. Somebody challenged me to a lip sync battle two years ago. Yeah. Someone said, "Oh, you were really good at it," because you know, if I do something, I need to do it properly. Um. So, and then I did a couple more, and people really enjoyed them. And so now I have the hashtag Lip Sync Sunday, all one word. Um. If you f- you'll find all of my lip syncs on there. Um. There's like two years worth now. Every Sunday I post something. Um, and it's I try to keep it like business or procurement or data related. So I'm not just doing any old song. I try to, although there is one with me in a unicorn onesie, which yeah. is completely not related to anything. It, it, but it's yeah, fun. It's fun. It's fun. Um, and actually, because of that, I don't get any like bad, like trolling or anything like that. And this is folks, and and that's the point I want to discuss. Very unique about Sudan. I'm serious right now. That LinkedIn is great, is social networking. Less we are here for business and stuff. Yeah. We would not be connected without LinkedIn. And yeah. I like you, that's why I'm here. That's why we knew before yeah, each yeah. other, right? And then now we met, it's almost like we probably know each other before, yeah, like yeah. professionally yeah, yeah. in a setting. And that's great to network. And I almost, you know, pr- promote LinkedIn. I would not be do what I do if, I, if not for LinkedIn and stuff, right? But be yourself. Yeah, um, but also 
90% of my business is inbound via LinkedIn. I don't do any outbound selling. People same. come to me when they're same ready. Here. Yeah. So it, 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 you know. With that said, we have a course on SEM Dujo. I need to sell something else. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We have a course on SEM Dujo. Tell me more. How to, how to improve your LinkedIn profile, right? And so when I believe, so this is what I'm trying to tell the supply chain people here right now. See, we are very obsessed. Let's go and do certification of, you know, supply chain, logistics. Because, yeah, let's do that. It doesn't matter who you do it. You can do for SEM Dujo. You can do for any other Apex or SIP. So I don't really care. Develop your competencies in supply chain. Yes. But what makes you different is the second and third pillar of, of supply or supply chain competencies I want to develop, which is your people skills, your soft skills, which include, again, how you behave yourself, how your LinkedIn profile look, your leadership skills, communication skills, presentation skills, networking. This is networking. Yeah. Do that, right? And the third pillar is more about the techno technology part. You know, I recently released a blog on the, the whole journey where we were 60 years ago. And right now, we're talking about supply chain digitalization, right? So that's, you need to start learning the technology part. We spend yeah. the whole con conference of bed ops or orchestra right now talking about how AI is changing the game of predictive procurement. You got to learn all of that, right? With that and said, again, yeah. I'm just going to say predictive procurement is great, but if it's based on, it's on wrong data, it's not going to work. Get the data clean. Great. So great to have you, Susan. Thank you. Right. I'm looking forward for more collaboration. Oh, yeah. Get the book. Susan is launching courses as well. We'll try to get some more collaboration with Suzanne going forward because you know we complement each other. Yeah, it's absolutely. Been pleasure. Thank you very Thanks much. Very much. <laughs> and then hopefully, yeah, the usual like, share, and subscribe. Keep it simple and keep it real. Ciao. So if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave your comments below.